after I had written the inaugural poem for President Clinton, United Nations people called and asked me, wrote to me and asked me if I would write a, a poem for the 50th anniversary of United Nations. It's amazing. I, I trembled to hear that because, uh, and then would I come to California, to San Francisco, and deliver the poem? We, this people on a small and lonely planet, traveling through casual space, past aloof stars, across the way of indifferent suns, to a destination where all signs tell us it is possible and imperative that we learn a brave and startling truth. And when we come to it, to the day of peacemaking, when we release our fingers from fists of hostility and allow the pure air to cool our palms, when we come to it, when the curtain falls on the minstrel show of hate and faces sooted with scorn are scrubbed clean, when battlefields and coliseum no longer rake our unique and particular sons and daughters up from the bruised and bloody grass to lay them in identical plots in foreign soil. When the screaming racket in the temples have ceased, when the pennants are waving gaily in the world, when the banners tremble stoutly in a good clean breeze, when we come to it, it's amazing what we can do. But then we must confess that not that when children's dreams are not kicked awake by nightmares of abuse, then we will confess that not the pyramids with their stones set in mysterious perfection, nor the gardens of Babylon hanging as eternal beauty in our collective memory, not the Grand Canyon kindled into delicious color by western sunsets, nor the Danube flowing its blue soul into Europe, not the sacred peak of Mount Fuji stretching to the rising sun, neither Father Amazon nor Mother Mississippi, who without favor nurture all creatures in their depth and on their shores. Those are not the only wonders of the world. When we come to it, we, this people, on this minuscule and kithless globe, who reach daily for the bomb, the blade, the dagger, yet who petition in the dark for tokens of peace. We, this people, on this moat of matter, in whose mouths abide cankerous words which challenge our very existence, yet out of those same mouths can come songs of such exquisite sweetness that the heart falters in its labor and the back is quieted into all. We, this people, on this small and drifting planet whose hands can strike with such abandon that in a twinkling, life is stripped from the living. Yet those same hands can touch with such healing, irresistible tenderness that the haughty neck is happy to bow, the proud back is glad to bend. Of such chaos, of such contradiction, we learn we are neither devils nor divines. When we come to it, we, this people, on this wayward floating body, created on this earth, of this earth, have the power to fashion for this earth a climate where every man and every woman can live freely without sanctimonious piety, without crippling fear. When we come to it, we must confess that we, are the possible. We are the miraculous. We, here at Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, on October the 18th, we are the true wonder of this world. That is when and only when we come to it. When it looks like the sun will not shine anymore. When one of us or two of us, or all of us can say, I am willing to be a rainbow in somebody's cloud. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.